NFL mailbag time here at Chat Sports, and we are live on St. Patrick's Day. So if you missed the live, make sure you join us every single Monday and Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Mitchell Renz and the new guy, Chase Sr., ready to break it all down. Since it is St. Patty's Day, Chase is going to be doing all the drinking here. First question coming in here is from Stephen Rockwell. Trevin, or I think you mean Tevin Jenkins, a reach at pick 17, or Penn State linebacker Parsons if he's available. I mean, if I got to pick between the two, I think Parsons is the better pick at 17. I know there's a lot of other teams out there that don't really want to reach on him because, according to the report, 15 teams have taken him off their big board because of some off-the-field concerns. I like Tevin Jenkins a lot, though, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma State. He's a little bit raw but has the high upside. I'd rather have Parsons, though, at 17. So I watched him play live a couple times two years ago. He opted out this past year because of my former job. He's a stud, but the problem there is the character concerns – if you're not concerned about that and you're willing to take a chance on him, like maybe John Gruden is willing to take chances on guys with character concerns, he is a linebacker who can wreck games kind of the way that Devin White did this past year with the Bucks. So if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. But I also want to do it for y'all's sake as well. We're always keeping you guys updated on NFL news, NFL rumors. We do free agency shows. We're going to be doing stuff for the NFL draft. So if you want to be kept up to date as much as humanly possible, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to join us for our live shows where Chase and I, Harrison and I, Tom and I, whoever is watching, we're going to be drinking beers, having a good time. That's what Chat Sports is all about. All right, this next one's coming in from, I guess, nobody. Uh, what will KC do at wide receiver? Watkins is still out there. Will they bring him back? I don't anticipate the Chiefs to actually bring back uh, Sammy Watkins, but I also don't know exactly 100% what they are going to do at the wide receiver position. You sure could potentially go out and get somebody um, like in the draft, but if I'm Kansas City, if you can't go out and sign anyone, I'll also go out there and say potentially maybe Kadarius Toney if he's still available. Oh, man. I'm thinking offensive line, though. Offensive line, offensive line. It's definitely the route I'm going to go. Cheers, Cheers, Chase. Everyone type C. Shots fired. All right, Mike Daniel, you're next up here. Villanueva to KC. Is that a possibility? Love the super chat. Appreciate it. Mike, if you're a fan of the Chiefs channel, go to YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. I do think Andre uh, Villanueva from Pittsburgh Steelers, who's like six foot ten. He's also an amazing human being. He's done a lot of great things with Pittsburgh. He would actually be a very good fit with Kansas City in the left tackle who just released Eric Fisher. Do you like that fit a lot or no? Love the fit. Yeah, okay. he's going to move on from Pittsburgh. He's not going to re-sign. Pittsburgh doesn't want him back. And for a Kansas City Chiefs team that got dominated on the offensive line, partly because of personnel, partly because of injury in the Super Bowl last year, they need to fortify that unit. Um, they signed Joe Tooney to a huge contract. Villanueva would be a perfect fit for KC. Super Chat coming in from Bars in the Truck. Happy Wednesday. Mac is back, Colts Nation. Bar is uh, bar in the truck. I know you're a Colts fan. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the super chat. I am curious what the Colts do. How many wins? Early prediction for the Colts this year. I know it's tough without the draft. What, they won 10 games last year with Phillip Rivers. I actually think Carson Wentz is an upgrade now that he reunites with Frank Reich. He had his best season with him in 2017 when Reich was the OC for the Eagles. Give me 11 wins for Indy. John, you're next up here on NFL Daily. AD, thank you for saying AD. Oh, wait, Andy Dalton is, like, taking a plan B when it's failing to work. <laughs> All right, John. I thought you meant nice. Adrian Peterson, but uh, we're, <laughs> I see where your head's at. Nice. All right, I appreciate it, though, John. Also, shout-out to Eric Bowersox for the $1.69 Super Chat. You send in a $1 Super, we'll give you a shout-out. Yakima Jones, best free agent left for the Green Bay Packers. Good question. I mean, they definitely need to upgrade the center position. I actually probably would have said Rodney Hudson, but he ended up leaving. What do you think is maybe the best addition here for Green Bay? Now that Corey Lindsley left, they have to pick up somebody on the offensive line, especially because Bakhtiari is coming off that torn ACL. I think the wild card here okay. is potentially a trade for OBJ. Wow. That would be awesome for the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. I know you guys can't see, but his balls are out right now. That was, pretty, <laughs> that was a pretty ballsy prediction there by Chase Sr. Now, obviously, there's a lot of questions that always come in on these NFL mailbags. We can't get to all of them. So if you want to ask me anything personal, if you want to ask me anything fantasy, football, Raiders, or NFL, always hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365. The DMs are open for a reason. So if you want, just slide on in. I won't mind. Next one's coming in from, word is, Broncos could trade for a quarterback. I like Minshew. Should Denver pull the trigger? What do you think? Do you think Denver should pull the trigger on Gardner Minshew? <laughs> 
What's the difference between Drew Locke and Gar- uh, Gardner Minshew? A is there much of a gap? I think mustache, there is. better facial hair. I think maybe are... Drew Locke is a little I bit mean, more I, stylish. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Drew Locke, but I think there's a big difference between Drew Locke and Gardner Minshew. I don't know. No, I. G- Trade for a better quarterback right, than I've Gardner only, Minshew. I've only an upgrade Chase from for Drew three Locke. weeks, but I, I don't know <laughs> if I've ever seen him speechless. So bring up Gardner Minshew or Drew Locke, and the dude's absolutely speechless. All right, I'm curious. Which team has the weirdest logo? I know it's a weird question, but you know what? Sometimes St. Patrick's Day things get a little bit weird here. So which team has the weirdest logo out of all the teams in the National Football League? When you look at the logo, which team do you think has the worst logo? Is there a team that comes to your mind that's just weird? Or No. There's been some logo changes. I guess the logo that I hate the most is the Jets. I think it's boring as hell. The Jets is really boring. I think the Browns' colors are ugly and make no sense because they're orange. Make no sense. Uh, I'm trying to think of like the color scheme uniforms that we used to really see on Thursday Night Football, where you'd watch the game and you're like, a lot of Washington football coming in right now, which I guess is just a W. Yeah, (laughs) it's just a plain W. And it's all Washington coming in. Rams, I don't really like the Rams either. I do like the Rams' new colors, not the bone jerseys, but go down in the comments, let us know. What's the weirdest logo in the National Football League? One of the OGs, what up, Juan? Should the Raiders get Malik Hooker? If they do, then I'm going to go get a Malik Hooker jersey. You and I both. I really wish, though, they could take away Eric Cush's 69 and give it to Malik. I mean, that'd be just an absolute slam dunk. But he'd probably get number 29. I'll tell you what. I'm guaranteeing it right now. If Malik Hooker goes to the Raiders, I am 100% getting that jersey. That's going to be one of the highest hot-selling jerseys, not just in the NFL, in Las Vegas. So just saying, you're going to see a lot of Hooker jerseys in Vegas. Let's go to All Out Broncos, <clears throat> 1858. Do you think the Broncos are planning something big? Maybe for a quarterback. Hopefully, it's not for Gardner <laughs> Minshew. <laughs> Gardner Minshew. That'd be amazing. Uh, I don't know what John Elway has up his sleeve. I think the biggest issue with Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson, they're not over 6'5. I feel like he only likes quarterbacks that are over 6'5. So I, I don't know what they end up doing, but I don't think they end up making a move for a quarterback. Let's go to Roger, another beer. Oh, boy. Watson, Gilmore. Okay, New England equals Jimmy G, a 20-21 third. New York Jets get Houston 21 second. Houston equals Darnold, San Francisco 21 second to fourth. New England 21 fourth. I'll be honest with you, man. Can we have Roger, Roger just, like, be the main person who puts together trades in our trade machine? Because I'm looking at this. Can you understand it? It's a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams. A lot of teams on. and a lot of drama it's with a ensue, four team which trade. Is good I think for the us. only issue here, Roger, is four team trades. They don't happen in the National Football League. If if you could send this to me on Instagram at Mitchell Ren three six five, that way I can look at it a little bit simpler. There's just so many moving parts going on here, but I don't think Watson ends up getting traded. I see Jimmy G in there as well. I see Sam Darnold. So can we simplify it? Go for it. So I San can. Francisco would get. Deshaun Watson and Stephon Gilmore. New England would get Jimmy G and a San Francisco 2021 third round pick. The Jets would get the Houston second round pick this year. Houston would get Darnold and the San Francisco second round pick and a fourth this year. And New England would get a fourth round pick this year. A 2022 first round pick, a third, oh and San Francisco. All right, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> we gotta move on. I'm sorry, Roger. I appreciate it, but that's just a lot. All right, Mark. Uh, hey guys, what are the Buffalo Bills doing in free agency? I think they're taking their time. They're they're being a little bit patient. I like the fact that they're able to bring back uh, Daryl Williams for a pretty good contract at the right tackle position. I was anticipating them to make a move at running back. Maybe they just plan on going out and drafting one. But sure. <sighs> I still think, though, that this is a football team that they are. They have a lot of pieces already together. The defense does need to be a little bit better. There's no doubt about that. But you brought back Williams. You thought, you know, Matt Milano was the guy. You ended up giving him a contract. We'll see what ends up happening. Maybe you go out and add another receiver. But uh, what, do, what do you think about the, the Bills? Love the Bills. And I think it's all because of the development of Josh Allen. And I think he's only going to continue to improve what they have going on with the Bills formidable front office with Brandon Bean, great coach, and Sean McDermott, and they have the quarterback. As long as you have those three, you're going to win consistently. All right, y'all. It's Mitchell Renz, Chase Sr., breaking things down here on today's show. If you like Chase and if you want to get to know him a little bit better, hit him up on Twitter at Chase underscore Sr. Are your DMs open? 
I, I believe they are. They better be open. Got a lot of followers, too, today, so I appreciate everybody. He's also that. verified on Twitter. So what I want you guys to do, go ahead and give him a follow on Twitter. We're going to be giving some shout-outs here a little bit later on. If you're not watching this live, don't be afraid to follow him. If you're going to keep you updated on NBA, NFL, he's also going to answer his questions in his DMs, and if he doesn't, he will, I promise you. At Chase underscore Senior, hit him up on Twitter. Super chat from John Wharton. You owe me a sip. Green Bay Trashers uniforms are ugly. I'm actually in agreement. I don't like the Packers uniforms, but it's also because green and yellow, it just doesn't go well. Eric Bauer socks. Which two running backs should New England sign? James White, Rex Burkhead, Leonard Fournette, Chris Carson. If I can only pick between those two names, I'll go with the cheaper names and James White and Rex Burkhead. I had thought Leonard Fournette did a good job. I thought Chris Carson played well, obviously, last year as well. But out of the names in terms of, like, where I think they could go, I think James White's going to end up going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, rejoined with Tom Brady. Leonard Fournette's a free agent, but they also had Damian Harris. I know he was unhealthy. I know, you know, he's got a lot of question marks, but yeah. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the way New England goes. Damian Harris was really good last year when he was on, when the, he field. Was on the field. Leonard Fournette would be a great Patriot way fit. Um, I think he's going to go back to the Bucks. James White, losing him, you know, that kind of stinks. But I think New England, given the money that they already spent, they're going to go after one of the cheaper options at running back. Let's go to Richard here. Should the Panthers sign Richard Sherman? So the Panthers definitely lost a lot of talent on the defense. However, should they do it? Potentially, it's always going to come down to price. If you listen to Pro Football Focus, they're going to say that Richard Sherman should get $14 million a year. I'm more in like $8, $9 million a year range. I think if a team goes out and gives him the big type of contract that Sherman wants, it's actually probably the New York Jets because of the whole connection there with Robert Sala the last few years. I think the Dallas Cowboys make sense. I think the Las Vegas Raiders make sense. I actually don't think that he ends up going to Carolina. All right, this one's from Sam U.P. Could the Browns sign a Dory Jackson and Jadeveon Clowney? Could they? Sure. I'm actually not that high on a Dory Jackson, but I do think a team like Cleveland could take a little bit of a gamble on Jadeveon, who they run this, you know, 3-4, also sometimes a 4-3 scheme. You pair him up there with a guy like Miles Garrett, maybe you could finally get Jadeveon, but it's going to be a lot of money, but luckily they do have money to spend. I thought one of the best signings of free agency was the Browns bringing in John Johnson, who I think is a star at the safety oh, yeah. position. They also get Grant Delpit back, the safety from LSU, in this time last year. So if they Missed can continue season. to load up on defense, I think they're good on offense. Adore Jackson, I think he'd be a solid option. Jadavion Clowney is always going to be overrated because of the noise that he made at South Carolina, and he hasn't developed into that superstar player that many people thought. I also think sacks are overrated to a certain degree. Jadavion Clowney, if you get him for the right price, could be a good pickup. What up, Robert Bruce? Do the Patriots draft Mac Jones if he's still there at pick number 15? I think they'd be intrigued by it. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I know that just because they gave Cam Newton a contract doesn't mean that they they won't do that. I think it would be really intriguing if the Bears traded up. And I understand they already got Andy Dalton. I understand they have Nick Foles. But maybe you try to make a move at quarterback. I will say the most – I think the place where he could probably succeed the best is probably actually New England. I agree. And I just I can't grasp the fact that Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace, they both have their jobs on the line. They can't afford to go with Andy Dalton as the starter. So Mac Jones would be a realistic target for the Chicago Bears in the first round. And for the Patriots, Cam Newton's contract, you might look at the thirteen, fourteen million dollar number and say, Oh, that's fat. Very incentive laden, so I do think Mac Jones could be in play for New England.